Hey, what's up everyone? Mike here in the BFH garage. Still, imagine that, working on Project Back in Black. I have my other Jeep almost stripped. I got the axles pulled. I'm getting ready to swap those over. Although I still have to rebuild my front axle or swap everything over to a new axle since I've been it. But before I start finishing up the back end here, what I want to do is take and relocate these spring perches. And the reason behind that is if you get a four inch lift or you know whatever amount of lift, you're going to notice that it separates the axle that much further and your springs look like they're in a banana shape. It drives people nuts. Um, I don't know how much it actually affects uh, ride quality or not. I think, I think it could affect the uh, life of the springs. So one of the options is to relocate the spring purchase. So I'm going to take this perch, we're going to move it back, and I'll show you where and how in just a second. When you look here at this spring perch, you're going to see how it's on this angle, and that's fine for a stock application using the short arm the way it is. However, when you put those large springs in there, you're going to raise it, say, four inches. What ends up happening from parallel, everything kind of gets out like a pie shape. So we need to relocate some things in order to get it back to as close to the uh, geometry as we can. I don't like the banana spring there. It tends to wear springs out a little bit quicker. And I just like using the entire spring instead of one side of the spring. So the way we're going to solve this is we're going to cut this perch out of here. And before I move on with that, I just want to talk real quick about aftermarket spring perches. Um, there's companies out there that sell a metal cloak, Artec and all that, and these things are unbelievable what they're selling. I, I don't want to knock at their heavy duty, I get that if you want something real thick steel, but think about the stock application here. They use little, I don't even know if this is eighth inch, looks like eighth inch steel, and, and it's barely welded on there. Think about this before you go off and spend a ton of money. Let's save some money. When you look at, uh, I can't remember if it's metal cloaks or whatever, they have this big old pie shape that has like 18 inches of weld space. You don't need that stuff for a spring perch. Stay with me for a second. Think about this. Your spring perch is here. When your axle is um, underneath this and your spring's compressed, the spring is what typically holds it in place. Now, when you go to full droop, the spring can droop, and these would fall right out if they're not welded in. The point I'm trying to make here is, you don't have to put these unbelievable, big old machete blade looking things in here to hold this thing in place. It's real simple. You can just put a couple of quick welds there. It's going to hold it in place. It's going to do its job. Everything is pushing up against it. It's not pulling it down. So take that into consideration. You can save yourself a ton of money. Now on the back side here, um, the reason for removing the gas tank is uh, obviously we're going to be grinding and stuff like that, but you won't be able to access the other um, tabs that are up on the back side here. So what I'm going to do is you can take an angle grinder to the outside ones and one of the inside ones, um, but the other inside ones, you're more likely going to need a Dremel, something small to get up in there and cut that off. And the way we're going to do this is you're going to go in just inside the weld line and you're going to cut there. You don't have to go through the weld. Just inside the weld line, there'll still be plenty of material there. And then um, these will pop right off. I'll show you here. So here's underneath, and this is what I'm talking about real quick. So when you look at the tab right here, you're going to see how it comes all the way up to the tub here. And trying to get an angle grinder up here is tough. If you have the gas tank in, this is an incredibly uh, uh, much more difficult job to do. It doesn't mean you can't do it. It's just that it's a little bit more tough to do. So all of these fuel lines, return lines, uh, wires, all that stuff needs to get moved out of the way. We're going to get all this stuff uh, um, cut out of here. One of the things I like to do with my fuel lines is use aluminum foil. And the reason is it uh, I'm not worried about catching stuff on fire and having gas catch on fire. That's not the uh, main issue here. But I want to keep stuff from getting into the fuel line, especially the, the uh, um, grinding dust and stuff like that. So if you take aluminum foil, you can crumple it. I double it over, I wrap it around, then I crumple it around. It doesn't fall off, and it keeps stuff from getting inside those fuel lines. The other side is pretty wide open, so you shouldn't have any access um, or any problems accessing that, although you can see that tab up top is kind of far up there. So getting a Dremel tool up there is going to be your best bet. So as you can see, this thing's a pain in the butt to get everything right. You're more than likely going to nick up your frame. You may get a little cut in there. If you do, just put a little quick weld over it, flap disc it. It's going to be fine. 
Over here, my uh, cutoff wheel only got so far, so I had to break out the uh, carbide burr bit, get in there to get those welds out. And once you do that, just take a little pry bar of some sort. Make sure stuff is loose enough. That one's disconnected, and then you can pull this thing right off. Now, one thing you need to make uh, sure you're paying attention to is when you look at the spring perch here, it's offset to one side. You're going to see this little bracket thing in here that goes inside of the frame. You can't swap them around side to side because of that offset. That's it. They come off. Now, for me, because of the amount of, and it's actually not even as bad as I'm making it out to be, but because of the amount, amount of rust on this one, I'm tossing these. I'm pulling the ones from my old Jeep, and I'm going to put them in its place. So now that we have that cut off, just get a flap disc in here, clean all this stuff up. If you got in your frame at all, put a little, put a little weld there, flap it all down, get rid of all your uh, rust pockets. And then uh, I'll show you how to get them all burned back in. All right, the hard part's done. We got the brackets completely grinded off. It is an absolute pain in the butt, and sometimes you just got to get in there and get after it. It takes a little bit of time, but it can be done. So after you get the brackets all the way off, make sure you don't have any grinding marks in there that you don't want. If you have some, either fill them with weld, grind them smooth, whatever you want. I don't care about pretty, so this is good enough for me. Um, here's the key to this entire project here. You cut off the brackets. You don't want to start on the driver's side and say, oh, that looks really level. I want to... I want to do it there. We have to start on the passenger side because we have to take into account the track bar bracket. So let's move over to the other side and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, here we are on the passenger side. This has the track bar bracket right here. Now, if you're going to go a triangulated four link um, where you eliminate the track bar, then you cut out the bracket and it doesn't matter. So, but this one here, we have to account for this. Um, because I'm not triangulating yet, I need to leave my track bar there, so I have to work within the confines of this. I can move it later if I want, but for right now, this is what I'm going to do. Here's the problem. So, right up on top of the frame here, there's a hole. And it's, it's the same on both sides and right on top of that hole. And if you imagine it coming straight down, you want to line it up with your bolt that holds in your bump stop cup. And to do that, you can see or is that right about there, how everything gets in the way there. Well, the other problem is, well, hold on, before I go to that, here's the original bracket that I cut out, and it went somewhere right about there, and you can see how it's got the sleep, uh, steep slope that way. So now that it's cut out, I can relocate it, but as I start moving this way, you can see that the, the bracket's going to get in the way, and I'm not going to be able to get where I want. So get rid of this, grab the other one. Actually, I'm going to pick this up and show you the comparison. You can see how you have to cut some of this part off. So as I set those there, you can see I cut it up shorter than what you have there. Now that's fine and dandy. I can move this thing all the way over here if I want, but here's another problem we're gonna face with this too. And that is your spring comes right through here and your track bar bolt will come through. You need to get that nut on there. And if your spring's riding right there, sometimes it's very difficult to get that uh, nut on there. So you don't wanna come too far over because of that track bar bracket. So if you're dealing with the track bar bracket, um, my recommendation, and I want you to come up to your own conclusion on this, but take the center line of this hole and you wanna go over one inch and imagine a line um, coming straight up through this bolt. So this bolt is one extension all the way up and where, the, where it would come out at the top side of the frame rail, you want it to be over one inch from that hole. What that's going to do is it's going to give us a, uh, a good mounted uh, spring perch and leave us just enough room to get that nut in there. And then more than likely, once you, you put the bolt through this side, the nut on this side, you're going to have to shave that bolt down so it's not catching up on your springs. I'll show you that here in just a second. Um, the other part of this project that's tough is you need to make sure that your, your brackets are flat. You don't want them cockeyed this way or that way. So what I'll do is I'll get them both up there tap them in place, I'll take a straight edge straight across and make sure that they're parallel with each other and then the lines, everything lines up and you can eyeball that from the other side. So I'll show you that now. 
I'm going to cover the top side. I'm going to take my little ruler here and close is close works for me on this project. I'm going to make a little mark there. I'm going to come up. I'm going to put my square right here on it. Make my line. I will come around the curve. You can even eyeball this one. That's fine. Um, I mean, the springs were doing fine, even though the brackets were completely bowed. They're not the brackets, but the springs were completely bowed. So now I can eyeball that. And as I take this perch, I need to move it this way. And once I start hammering in, I'm going to look right up this line and make sure everything lines up. And it's roughly an inch. You can plus or minus it to whatever your needs are. I don't really care. But that's what we're looking for. And then uh, we'll have to tap it in place. But make sure everything gets there. We'll get it tapped up in place. So after you cut these off, one of, the, one of the things you might need to do is kind of bend those in a little bit so they hold in place. So now as I'm looking at this line, I actually need to move the bracket that way a little bit, which surprised me. There we go. And now it's looking straight up and down in that line. So that's good on this side. Let's go to the other side. We'll, we'll tack that one in place. We'll look across and see what it looks like. A little tip before we get started. If you haven't removed your bump, uh, bump stop cups in a while, they get really rusted up in there. I have a spacer here so I can even out my spacing. Undo it, throw some new uh, um, anti-seize on there, and you won't have to worry about that for a while. All right, so we're going to take this spring perch on this side now. Kind of line it up, start getting it kind of in place, and I'm going to look and see if that lines up, and boy, that is pretty darn close. Now, what you want to do is look straight across. You can see both spring perches. Look straight across, make sure they look absolutely parallel to each other. And if they do, as far as the angle, then get yourself a known straight edge. And you're going to want to run it across both perches. And this will tell you whether one's cockeyed or not. And these are actually perfect just by chance. So that works for me. Now, the first time I did that with this one, it was cockeyed out a little bit. So the way they are right now, I am looking at them straight across. Everything's parallel. Everything's level to each other. I can tack these in place. I'm going to double check again after I tack, and then I'm going to burn them in. All right, once you get all burned in, come back, check, make sure all of your welds are adequate. Um, you know, the back side, you got to get those welds on there. It doesn't take much, but you just want to make sure that they're going to do the job. And then uh, after that, wire brush it all up, get that thing painted, and uh, keep that rust from happening. So I'm just going to paint the rest of the frame, so I'm going to do a little bit more cleanup here, and then I'm going to paint the rest of it. All right, as you can see, I got this all painted up. Everything looks great. Double checked everything. Everything checks out perfectly good. So time to move on to the next project.